Hi! Today I'll be comparing the Insta360 X3 to the new Osmo Action 4 and see which one is better in terms of video quality and I'll be trying different modes, well different modes on the Insta and just the one mode on the Osmo. So let's see which one's better. Okay, so let's first try the Mi mode on the Insta versus the, well, the usual mode on the Osmo Action 4. Now the Mi mode, as you can probably tell, has a seam running right where I'm supposed to be. So it's, that's a weird thing. I never use the Mi mode because it's, it's really weird. Well, here I don't have this issue. So I'm just me. Now on both cameras, I'm using the standard picture profile. So no log picture profiles this time around because I just want to have everything set to auto and just work with just pressing the start button and working with that. I mean, that's what these cameras were made for. You know, like nothing beats the Insta360's 360 mode. Seriously, I mean, again, tiny planet. You know, and with this, you're just an idiot with a selfie stick. Although, a short selfie stick, because this one is like seriously long. I mean, how about the single lens mode on the X3? In terms of field of view, the Osmo is actually wider. It's actually wider than the Insta, which is kind of weird. You know, talking to two cameras at the same time, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the video quality and the resolution, I think the Osmo wins here. I mean, even the old Osmo wins this one. Again, I'm using just standard all-auto settings and by the look of the screen, yeah, Osmo wins by a mile. There's one thing that you cannot do with the Osmo Action 4 and that is the third person view which I'm doing right now. I mean this looks, this really looks like you're an idiot walking around with a pole stick but you know the view is interesting and you get that kind of third person experience. So two cameras at the same time and wow there's a, there's a big ball over there. Now when it comes to time lapses, I do love the fact that the new Osmo Action 4 has an auto feature. So it kind of automatically detects the motion and how fast things are moving and it adjusts the speed accordingly. So you don't really have to think about too much as to how you need to set your camera to get a good time lapse. You also have like presets for clouds, for people, for all sorts of scenery. And here on the Insta for instance, I don't have this, I just have to do everything like manually and there's a guy skateboarding here or, or skating rollerblading uh, and he's quite quite good actually now this is the benefit of, of an insta360 because it films everything and you can just swivel things around and you know i mean i could not do this with that i would have to no, turn <laughs> but he's good A complete change of the environment. Now, uh, let's test out how good these two cameras work in the dark. We will venture into the forest. Sorry, I have to turn you guys like this. Oh yeah, and that's where we're going. Uh, I'm still using auto settings and standard picture profiles, so no, no HDR or no logarithmic image profiles, but you can see how much darker it got here. And it's a, it's a wonderful forest. I mean, seriously, seriously, it's nice here, slippery. Now I'm also shooting this with auto white balance, which means that I'm quite curious to see how, how well these two cameras are matching the colors. I guess I said okay. okay, now let's try the log picture profiles on both of these cameras in this dark situation. Here I'm using the log on the Insta360, here I'm using the D-Log M, which shoots at 10-bit colors. Now I'm not really sure that's a benefit here, but anyway. So, again this one with the 360 field of view, and this one with just the you know, like an open gate field of view. Yes, I'm always shooting the open gate, so a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. You know, I think this is going to make more sense once we get to a more brighter, you know, and contrastier scene. Although it doesn't get more contrasty than here, you know, with the shadows and the really bright sky. You know, creative shots like this. Okay, so now let's look at the full potential of the logarithmic image profile. So the log and the D-log. 
I mean, how much more dynamic range does the Osmo Action 4 have over the Insta360 mosquitoes? There's so many mosquitoes. I mean, we have so much moisture in this country, seriously. But yeah, you know, try to pay attention to the clouds in the back. I mean, which one, which one shows them better alongside with the shadows over there? Now when it comes to the size and weight of these two cameras, I mean it's pretty much clear which one is the winner. And on the Insta360 X3, you have both lenses protruding out, which means that you will damage them if you bump them. Now you can use lens guards, but I, I don't use them because they just keep fogging up, um, so I took them off. So now I have to be very careful, whereas with this one, you actually have a lens glass or a lens protector, which if you, you, know, if you break it somehow, you can replace it. Here you have to actually replace the whole camera. So this is a definite win I think for the Osmo Action 4 in terms of size and form factor. Now when it comes to the battery life I have to give this one to the Action 4 because the battery life as you can see is much longer than on the Insta X3 and I've noticed this in my everyday use. Now I've been using this camera for about a week now and it definitely holds in terms of the battery while here I'm always running out of battery. So if you need spare batteries then you definitely need them for the X3 and for the Action 4 I'm I mean, honestly, I'm not even considering on buying extra batteries. No, but still, tiny planet. Yeah, I know, it's a gimmick, I know. What about the stabilization? I mean, which one is better? This is with the Rocksteady Plus. I am like so out of shape. I mean, you probably noticed the change in the scenery. We just came back from our holiday in Tunisia and it was, well, it was quite different, as you can see. I mean, I, I do recommend Tunisia. Don't expect too much. And if you will go, go to the island of Jerba because it's a mixture of the northern, more open culture and a southern, more traditional culture. The food was okay, the people were really friendly. And yeah, it's definitely not as humid as here. So to wrap this video up, let's first talk about the Osmo Action 4. Now, DJI have made something different this year as they released this ahead of time. Typically, a new camera comes out right around where GoPro releases their camera and we're waiting for the GoPro Hero 12. Not really sure if it's going to be called Hero anymore. I think it's just going to be called GoPro 12 rumors, but it's probably not going to be a much bigger improvement to the Hero 11. Now DJI definitely made a big improvement with the Action 4 and since they've released it ahead of time, you can now take this into your holiday and you now have fun with it. So they've you now jumped ahead of GoPro with this little teeny tiny marketing trick. So who is this camera for? Well, basically, if you want to do vlogs like I've showed you in this video and some of the previous videos with the Osmo Action 1, well then this is definitely a better choice because the video quality with this is just amazing. I mean, I'm really impressed at how a small camera like this can produce really high dynamic range and sharp video image quality. And if you don't have a need for a 360 field of view video, well then this is just the best choice and I do recommend this and of course I'm going to recommend DJI because that's where, you know, my heart lies. Even though I'm not sponsored by them it would be nice though now for the insta 360 x3 now there's nothing that beats a 360 degree camera in its flexibility and the creative possibilities that you can get with the 360 field of view the only issue that i have with this camera is the video quality i've made so many videos about the x3 and most of them are just like not good and in all of them i talk about the poor video quality i was expecting this to be an upgrade to the dji osmo action one but from the video point of view it's, it's actually not so this is an upgrade. This is pretty much the same or a little bit worse. But still, if you need the 360, then this is the way to go. Now, in terms of price, both of these cameras cost around you know, the same amount. And it's really up to the way how you're going to use them. For me, this is going to stay and this camera is going to be sold. I'm going to sell this with a selfie stick and everything. If, you, if you're interested, leave a comment down below. I will, however, only ship this in Europe. I'm not going to ship it abroad because it just wouldn't be feasible. So anyway, if you're interested, let me know. If you have any comments or questions, leave that down below. Also hit the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.